The New Kids, 1985. So here we have a brother and sister who arrive in a small time to help their relatives run an amusement park after the death of their parents. Dad was a big shot in the military, which leads to the fact that brother and sister have been to many different schools. Shortly after arriving in the small town in Florida, they find the town is terrorized by a local street gang of backwoods rednecks. The director, Sean Cunningham, who was known famously for Friday the 13th and The Last House on the Left remake, does an amazing job showing the story unfold and takes what could typically be some normal high school bullying turns it into something much more terrifying. You can definitely see where his time with Friday the 13th has rolled over into this film. Shannon Presby plays the male lead in the movie, and in true 80s fashion, he appears to be in his late 20s playing a high school student. His character is believable, and his military upbringing in the character really shines through when he exercises restraint through tough situations. Famous Lori Lachlan of Full House Stardom and College Tuition Scandal plays the lead female, sister of Shannon's character. While this is early in her career, you can certainly see how she became a star in Hollywood. Her acting is natural and her character brings that high school crush desire that is key to her role. James Spader plays the leader of the gang, one of the best villains in movie history in my opinion. The way he delivers as being a bad guy is top notch. He displays a raw psychopathic presence and shows a complete antisocial personality that is very rarely portrayed properly on screen. He's went on to do some big roles but one of the most probably overlooked roles is that of Richard in Mannequin. Yes, that nerdy pencil necked kiss ass. Some other honorable mentions include John Philbin, a point break, Return of the Living Dead and Children of the Corn, Eric Stoltz, aka the original Marty McFly, known for Pulp Fiction, The Butterfly Effect, and The Prophecy, just to name a few. The acting overall was pretty good. Some of the gang members that had lesser roles was a good thing because not all of them brought their A-game, if they ever had an A-game to bring. The leads were right on point. Again, especially James Spader. There were times where the 80s really shined through, in my opinion. That's what makes this movie magic. But it's easy to see why this movie was unknown to me until I was looking for movies to review. It was good, but probably pushed the boundaries of bullying past that of the wholesome family movie. The effects were surprisingly good. There were no aliens or magic powers, so no need for any CGI or any animated effects. This means that any effects that did take place had to be practical ones, such as gunshots and wounds. There were a couple of instances where there should have been some more attention given to what was going on in the scene, but as a whole, it was easy to overlook those mistakes in lieu of the story being told. Did I like this movie? You're damn right I did. It had all the cheese of the 80s that we love while telling a very dark and twisted tale. There were times where you sympathized with the protagonist and thought, damn, what's it going to take to get through this guy's head? As the bullying was going on, it was light and fun in all the right places and absurdly dark in the other giving it a great contrast. Like I said, you can tell the exact moments the director turned on the Friday the 13th switch and it was magic.